Welcome to The Dump Station, a podcast from RV Enthusiast. Howdy, folks, and welcome to another episode of the Dump Station podcast by RV Enthusiast Magazine. Uh, my name is Chris Doherty. I'm the technical director for RV Enthusiast, joined by our publisher, Bob Livingston, who's coming to us on the road. Bob, how's it going down there? Hey, it's going great. Uh, you know, a few days on the road, a um, little bit of wind. Uh, other than that, hey, it's okay. So you, you were just saying that you are right near the Mexican border and that your cell phone was trying to pick up uh, Mexican cell service. It did. It just said, welcome to Mexico. And it said that I guess I have that included with my roaming charges or whatever that is and said, well, have a good time, whatever. So we're very, very close. We're right on the border here in a, a, a small town, San Elizario, and a nice little place. And uh, it's, it's a new discovery for us. Mm -hmm. So we're here uh, to talk about Harvest Hosts, and you're staying at one of the Harvest Host locations. So tell us a little bit about that. So I'm staying at the place tonight at uh, the Lycon Dairy, which is uh, it's right in town here. Uh, it's a really nice place. They've got uh, they've got a really nice store. They've got a petting zoo. They have. Uh, uh, a, a little pond here so you can walk around the lake and I think you can even fish if you wanted to. <clears throat> then they have this restaurant and I'm sitting in a restaurant right now, which is uh, the uh, the Outlaw Saloon and Grill, which is not open until tomorrow, which mm -hmm. is too bad because I was it would have been great to have dinner here tonight. But it's really kind of neat inside. It's old Western and it's obviously mm -hmm. it, it fits the, the Tex, Texas motif. And mm -hmm. so Anyway, they, it's a really nice place. I assume they have cows and they do like milk cows and all that stuff. I haven't seen that part yet because we just got here a couple hours ago, but we're going to do some exploring later. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the neat things about Harvest Host is that you get to go and experience a lot of these things and it really adds a neat uh, uh, aspect to your travels. And so this is, you stayed at one last night also, right? We did. We stayed at a ghost town called, believe it or not, Shakespeare Ghost Town. In Lordsburg, New Mexico, which is a mm -hmm. really tiny burg, and this place is pretty authentic, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of a, it was a really an incredible evening last night. Uh, we uh, we had really nice weather. We went on a fantastic tour for almost two hours. There's so much there. The history there is just amazing. And you know, we were just standing on the the street of the, of the town because it it has it has mining uh, history. It also has a I guess a diamond swindle history. And, uh, you know, I've fed an awful lot of information yesterday in, in, that, in that two hour period. So I don't have all that information, but the family that's, that owns it has been there since 1935. And, and the, the, the mother was mm -hmm. pretty feisty and, you know, and it was just, it's just pretty amazing. And so, so we parked there and there was another RVer there in, the, in their area. They have a nice little parking area, which is fairly level. And we had a, a spectacular evening. You know, stars were beautiful at night. It was a balmy evening. We sat outside and, you know, no planes, no cars and highways, and no trains. Wow. That's what we always experience that when we're in a campground. <laughs> right. My sister Jan who and her husband Tom are on the road, and they always joke to me about when they, you know, go to a campground with trains, because we did that once. They came with me on a trip, and it was a high-speed express train uh, about 20 feet off the campground in the oh, back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've and, had that before. Uh, yeah. yeah. And oh. it's amazing. I will tell you that the silence last night was – amazing and i yeah. haven't i haven't had that in a long time i mean you know, we winter in palm springs and we're close to you know a lot of traffic and we're close to the airport and so we, mm -hmm. we hear noises all the time so you, you know you kind of just become immune to it so when you mm -hmm. don't hear anything you go hey i'm not hearing anything and it's, mm -hmm. it was just a spectacular evening and it, it was it was a real it was a real unexpected you know um experience and a pleasure from joining this group which mm -hmm. you know we just we just joined last night was our first night in a in a harvest host facility, which is which is fast you know, fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. let's learn a little bit more about how uh, about um, harvest hosts, and uh, so we're going to uh, bring in uh, Joel Holland, who's joining us tonight, and Joel is the uh, CEO of harvesthost.com and uh, in the company, uh, which is a membership program that invites self-contained RVers to have unique overnight stays at wineries, breweries, farms, restaurants, and more. Uh, Joel is a former tech entrepreneur who sold his business in tech and bought Harvest Host because he loves road travel, the idea of stopping at out of the way places and the ability to provide value to the Harvest Host members and 
of course, the Harvest Host locations as well. They currently have about 140,000 members and 2,000 hosts. Uh, the growth has been astronomical. It has doubled over the last year, aided by the increase in RV travel. Uh, he expects to add another 1,000 new hosts in 2021. And Joel, thank you for joining us. Hi, Joel. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's a fun intro. I like that. Uh, you, got, you got me all fired up. I, <laughs> uh, I do love road travel. The reason my wife and I actually got into um, RVing and bought Harvest Hosts is we together RVed through all the lower 48 states over a two-year period and just completely fell in love with the lifestyle, with the freedom, with the quiet. <laughs> and, uh, and, and ultimately, some of our best experiences were at wineries and breweries and, and, you know, and, and farms. Um, and Harvest Hosts really has that in droves. So it's, um, yeah, we love being part of this community. Yeah, it's great. I'll tell you what, this is an exciting program for people who are on the road, because uh, if you're on the road and, and you want to, you know, you're traveling day after day after day, and, and the obvious, obviously this for this, for the, as a harvest host, you're, you're, you spend one night and sometimes you can be invited for a second night. But the, the idea is to spend a night on the road, get up, go to the next place. Typically you would do that, you would go to a campground. And you'd get there in the afternoon, you'd set up, you'd have some dinner, you'd watch a little TV, go to bed, get up the next day and go move on. Then, you know, sometimes you would stay, you could even stay at a, at a, at a rest area or you could stay at a, at a truck stop or something like that. So, so what happens here is I learned something totally different. I mean, I got into this thing because people said, hey, wow, this is a great way you can you, you save all this money. Well, forget the money. It's not the money thing. I mean, I, last night and tonight... I'm at the Lycon Dairy here, and, and, and it's like, I mean, the two nights, I've already paid for my membership. So forget the, forget the money part of it. The experience part of it is what's really fun. So instead of going to a campground and setting up and doing just what you normally do, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, a campgrounds offer, you know, a great place to relax and, and mm -hmm. you know, get some sleep. And, you know, and if you, can, you may want to spend more time there if there's something to do. But for the people who want to be who are on the road, the road travelers, road warriors, if you will, this gives, gives you something really fun to do in the afternoon. And with the experience that I had on, on my, last night, it is, that was perfect. I mean, I, you know, I didn't expect to have that much fun, just an overnight stop. So what's turned out to be something that we thought, hey, this was going to be a way to, you know, you know, for the, you know, save some money on the road. It has nothing to do with that. Forget it. It's right. the experience of having fun on the road while you're yes. traveling. Yes. Totally. And, and, totally. And that's, and so our, our slogan, our, our slug line is the unique RV experience and you, you nailed it. It's really, it's, it, every time I visited a Harvest Host location, which has now been like a bunch of times, um, we leave with a story and we leave in it with an experience, super exactly. memorable. Absolutely. And, and yeah. And so, and to me, you know, it's a compliment to your, to your natural RV travels. We still spend, we probably still spend over a hundred days a year in campgrounds and that's great campgrounds have a lot of utility it's nice to plug in sit back and relax and then we sprinkle some harvest hosts in along our journey just to get a little bit of flavor you know especially local flavor um on the way oh yeah and for me you know the other thing that's kind of fun is you know my wife and i you know we cut our teeth going to you know forest service campgrounds this is many many moons ago this is probably before you were born but uh you know <laughs> we ended up uh, we ended up uh, being, you know, primitive camping most of the time, boondocking, if you will. And we always got a thrill out of using the, the self-containment in our RV. Yep. And we haven't done a lot of that in the last few years. And all of a sudden, hey, we're on this trip and we got we have plans to stop off at a bunch of the Harvest Host uh, you know, facilities or, or, or what areas. I don't think you call them facilities. I guess they're just members or whatever. And, uh, you know, we, last night I was sitting there going, hey, this is self-containment. I'm not... I'm not hooked up to anything. I'm get to use the rig the way it was designed to have a pretty extensive solar system on it. And I'm kind of, I'm really liking that. I don't get these opportunities yeah. too often. So this this trip, this is going to be our fourth cross-country trip in the last five years. Nice. Uh, it's it's going to be a totally different trip this year. It really will yeah. be. Well, and, and my guess is it's going to be one of your mo most memorable because you're going to have all these, you're going to be sitting with friends a year from now going, man, there was this one time I was at a ghost town in New Mexico. Exactly. What a trip, right? Like yep. that's, that's what it's all about. Um, <clears throat> and I see Chris pulling up some of the photos here on our website. I love doing this. Like we, we look through, we have tens of thousands of member submitted photos from, I mean, look at that out, outdoor air museums. 
We've got, um, you know, lavender farms are beautiful. There's just so much variety, um, and it's just unique. It just makes it a unique experience. Yeah. So, so you're looking at adding a thousand new members in 2021. That's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh, host. Yeah. So, so our goal is to end the year with over 3,000 host locations, um, and yeah, that is aggressive. But we've actually it's fire right before this call. Uh, I was on a call with our team and we're hiring. We're doing a lot of hiring right now for mm -hmm. host recruiters. Mm -hmm. And um, and so if anyone's listening that is interested in helping us recruit there hosts, we, we, we're, we're hiring. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the people that we, we uh, our hosts last night are really thrilled. They've only been doing it for about a month, month and a half. And they're totally thrilled with it. And they're getting quite a few RVs. They're actually going to expand the space so they can actually allow a few more people in there. Nice. And it's a real, and, and look, their intention is to be able to, you know, get some, you know, get some funds so they can actually, you know, uh, they want to rebuild some of the sites, the, some of the places, the, the buildings, stuff that have some of them, in, you know, fires and the weather. And they just want to, they want to maintain it as a historical monument. And, and I think they're going to do a good job of that. They're, they're really gung ho with that. I mean, I'm telling you that their whole life revolves around making Shakespeare ghost town thrive again in a different way. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> well, and, and that, by the way, that's what, I, that, so our members obviously enjoy the program because there's great places to go, but our hosts are such wonderful small businesses. And when we, when we interview them or survey them, ask them, why are you a part of the program? Um, the first response is that they love meeting RVers and sharing their lifestyle with them. That's number one. Number two is they enjoy the additional revenue, which is understandable. They're a business, right? And I expect that to be the first answer. Um, our members this year are going to spend over $40 million with these small businesses. Oh, yeah. And and that, and that and it's meaningful, right? It makes a big difference. But I was really touched that they like the Shakespeare ghost town. They're just excited to share this lifestyle with other people. It's cool. Yeah, you know, and I think there'll be a the you know, the economy of, of having guests spend the time spend time in these smaller towns. Obviously, people are going to spend money there. I mean, look, yep. just our, for ourselves, we we left this morning and we needed to get fuel. And on the highway, I saw a place that I could have bought fuel. I forgot what the price was, but in town it was about twelve cents or fifteen cents more a gallon. But I said to my wife Lynn, I go, hey, you know, let's just support this town because we had a really good town la time last night. So we just filled up there. And you know what? It cost me more money, but it was worth it to me because I wanted to. I wanted to, you know, do business in, a, in a, this little town where we had a, a nice evening. And the same thing is going to happen while we're here. You know, we're going to we're going to go in the store and we're going to buy a bunch of stuff, and you know, we'll trade with the area. It's great. What's just funny in the uh, we we're in the RV business, um, you know, article today talking about our program and the quote in there I loved. It was it, I, I said this offhand, but they used it. And I loved it, which was. We love supporting the small these the small towns because selfishly, if the small towns disappear, our viewers are in a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> that's, and that's so a true we, statement. it's yeah, true, absolutely. and you know, <laughs> so so I'm with you. We always try to support local and support small because it benefits us for sure. Well, and also there are a lot of small towns that people have no clue there's anything going on. Mm -hmm. sure. And I think this draws people in and they're going to learn something about it and they're going to come back and they're going to tell their friends and, 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 you know, there's going to be, there's going to be some, you know, movement to, you know, uh, for the, from the RV uh, crowd to, to, to go to places like that. I mean, people, I mean, obviously RVers tend to go to smaller places anyway than big cities, you know, naturally it makes more sense because of the facilities. But I think there's, there's something here uh, that, that get people to, to, so expand their horizons and, and say, hey, you know, this is a tiny little bird, but instead of just, you know, racing right through it, let's stop off and see what's going on. And you yep. always find something. I don't think there's a place, there's a place in the country, and even Canada, and in the terms, you know, that, that, you, that you can't find something to, to do or something interesting in a, in a small place, a small town. Yeah, I always say only boring people can get bored while traveling. Yeah. There's always something interesting. <laughs> That's true. That's right? true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, back in the day, uh, uh, journalist uh, Charles Corral used to travel the highways of America. And that mm -hmm. was one of the greatest things. People loved uh, watching his uh, on-the-road segments. And and uh, that certainly he helped feed guy. our industry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, my, my wife is, is slugged this trip, which is actually – Last year we were going to do this trip, but it was because of the COVID we had to cancel it. it was this, that was going to be our 50th wedding anniversary trip, so we oh. had to postpone it, and we're doing it this year. And so my wife kind of like she read, she reread uh, uh, 
uh, travels with Charlie, you know. Charlie is a standard poodle, and we have a standard poodle. And so hmm. now she's just, all she wants, she's just, she's buried in finding interesting things to do yeah. and places to go and, and write about them and put them on Facebook and talk to her friends mm-hmm. and everything. And it's been really, I don't, sometimes I don't even really get a chance to talk to her because she spends more time on Facebook than she does with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Joel, tell us a little bit more uh, about uh, Harvest Host. How can someone become a member if they're interested? Yes. So if, if you, um, the only requirement really to be a member, the big one is that you have a self-contained RV. Uh, that means you have a bathroom on board, you know, have some cooking facilities, water, everything you need. Um, because when you visit these businesses, you'll arrive during business hours and you'll be able to go do a wine tasting or a beer tasting or tour the town. Um, but typically they're going to close and you're going to be spending the night um, on property all by yourself, and, which is part of the peaceful you know, ambiance. But there are no facilities available. And so having a self-contained unit is, is critical to the program. Uh, and then we just say, be a, you know, be a good neighbor. Right. Like it, it, use common sense. I often say, pretend you're visiting grandma. Right. Like you're going to treat the property re- with respect. Um, mm-hmm. You're going to take you know, out what you took in. Um, and that's it. And then the, the program's not expensive. It's about ninety nine dollars a year, which gives you unlimited access to all the locations. Stay as often as you want, as many times as you want. There are no additional camping fees. Um, we say take a percentage of the money you're, you're saving uh, by not being at a campground and support the local business. Uh, by mm-hmm. the you know by the by the local wares, and um, and that and that's it. That you know have fun. I mean it's a really simple program, um, rooted in travel and adventure. And then if you're a host location, you know if you if you run a business, and you have RVers to uh, room for RVers to visit, we would love to work with you. We never charge anything to the hosts. It's completely free mm-hmm. to sign up. There's no contract. There's no obligation, um, and we don't take any percentage of the money our members spend. Also, on that note, on average, our members spend about thirteen thousand dollars per year at the host each each host location. So, it is a meaningful additional piece of revenue. Um, mm-hmm. But we think it's more than that. We think it's the relationships. It's you know it's really sharing the you know the camaraderie. Um, but if you're interested, you can go to harvesthost.com. Um, as a member, you can click join now. If you're a host location, you can click four hosts. It's a very simple application form, and we'd love to work with you. Yeah, sounds exciting. Yeah, fantastic. Joel Holland, CEO of uh, Harvest Host, thank you very much for joining us on uh, the Dump Station podcast. Yeah, yep. thanks for having me. Hey, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot yeah. of fun. It's going to be a lot more fun, too. I <laughs> say. Thanks, Definitely. gentlemen. Have a thank good you. One. Take care. For more information on Harvest Host, of course, you go to harvesthosts.com. And for more information on RV Enthusiast Magazine, you can come over to our website at www.rventhusiast.com. Thanks for joining us.